Hello, my name is Julia Minerva Rhodes, and welcome to my channel, where I explore how philosophy can be applied to the everyday world with a focus on media and religion. If this interests you, please like, subscribe, and consider donating to my Patreon, link in description. In this video, I'll be looking at the intersection between religion and cinema through the specific example of Andrei Rublev. Andrei Rublev is a 1966 three-hour Russian black-and-white epic movie about a painter saint in the medieval period. Film critics have considered it one of the best movies ever made, not just because of its spectacular scale, but also because of its difficult historical context. The director Andrei Tarkovsky, an Orthodox Christian, was making a movie so grand that it would inevitably be a national achievement, and he chose a subject that argued the importance of Christianity to Russia's cultural identity. For him to do this at the height of Soviet power was a bold move, but this is exactly what makes Andrei Rublev excel as a work of Christian cinema. It is in responding to a society that had rejected religion that the need for religion could be most beautifully felt. This is a part of why Tarkovsky remains resonant as a filmmaker to this day, and here we find arguably his most ambitious movie, and the one which contains the deepest exploration of Christianity. But Andrei Rublev is not just about the value of religion in the world of art. It is about the value of art in the world of religion, which is just as easily misunderstood. Considering its three-hour length, Andrei Rublev is surprisingly engaging, in large part because of its beautiful cinematography. Tarkovsky's mixture of slow pacing, nature imagery, and mystical themes gives his movies a signature ambient and meditative feel. The painter's story is bookended by the story of two other artists, the balloonist at the beginning of the film and the bellmaker at the end. The film follows Andrei's career in chapters. The final three chapters of the film mirror a crucifixion burial resurrection structure during which Andrei experiences a crisis of faith. Not a crisis of faith in God, but faith in humanity. In a spectacularly filmed historical reenactment, we witness the city of Vladimir being raided. The horrific violence Andrei witnesses during this event causes him to take a vow of silence. This vow of silence is broken at the film's end, upon the bellmaker's completion of the bell. What is perhaps most challenging about the movie is the decision to refrain from showing Andrei's artwork until the end. Understanding the power of the movie's ending requires an understanding of the importance of icons within orthodoxy. Within orthodoxy, icons are more than just decorations for a church or mere religious artwork. Orthodox theology is mystical. A theologian must commune with the Holy Spirit in the same way the authors of scripture were guided. Likewise, the icon painter's artistic process is sacred, requiring them to enter a trance-like state of receptiveness to divine inspiration, through which something of the Spirit of Christ can enter an icon of Christ. So, just as they believe that when you eat the communion bread, you are mystically communing with the body of Christ, in the same way, when you kiss an icon of Christ, you are kissing Christ. This is important in the context of experiencing this film, because Tarkovsky, by filming Andrei's icons, is translating the mediation of the divine into the cinematic medium. If we can believe that God's Holy Spirit can be directly experienced through a painting, why not a movie? In this revolutionary reading of the film, Andrei Rublev implicitly culminates by capturing God directly on camera. We may then wonder if the film is a moving icon to St. Andrei Rublev himself, channeled through Tarkovsky's own reverence, which goes as far as including an ethically questionable animal sacrifice. Andrei Rublev is thus an important piece of Christian cinema because it communicates this central idea of Orthodox theology, which the rest of Christianity could learn from. This is not just the idea that art can mediate heaven onto earth. It is the idea that by engaging in this mediation, we are continuing the mediation between heaven and earth, which Christ himself performs at the center of the religion through his incarnation. The narrative of this Christianity is not one of war between heaven and earth, but of participating in Christ's redemption of creation. Such a Christianity is obligated to be active in environmental concerns rather than against them. And yet, Christian society is hypocritical, and Andrei Rublev's journey in the film confronts him with this. The violence of the raid upon Vladimir, while at first appearing to be mere outside invaders, is ultimately shown to be the result of a conflict between the noblemen of his own country. 
This corruption is interesting to consider in the context of the presence of the feminine and the pagan within this otherwise very Christian and masculine film. The movie has two female characters. The most prominent is a Eurydice, who, we should note, is played by Tarkovsky's wife, Irma Rausch. A Eurydice is a holy fool. We must understand while watching this character that she is not an insane person, but a sane person who acts insane as a willing sacrifice of dignity for religious reasons. This is a character who is devoted to cryptically channeling the Holy Spirit, and it's important to note that in some Christian traditions, the Holy Spirit is associated with the Divine Feminine, particularly in Orthodoxy. We must keep in mind here the beardless and perhaps feminine, or at least androgynous appearance, of the angelic figures within Andrei Rublev's own icon of the Trinity. The holy fool cries when Andrei splatters paint on the wall in anger over the state's violence against his friends. His aim to reflect the beauty of heaven through his art has been diverted through the spilling of blood, causing his art to now instead reflect, like abstract art, the chaos of the earthly. In the end, she goes off with the raiders. When Christian society fails to reflect the spirit of heaven, the spirit challenges Christian conventions by associating with the pagans. This lines up with the other female character in the film, a pagan woman who Andre meets when he wanders into a pagan festival. Andre rejects the temptations of the flesh he finds here, but the scene is so complex that it seems hard to read it as either agreeing with the pagans or agreeing with Andre's condemnation of them. There seems to be a subtle longing for a reconciliation with the sensuality that Christianity has repressed, a longing which is in line with the central idea of this reading of the film. The idea that the essence of religious art is a longing to bridge the divide between heaven and earth.